Hi, Barbara. Welcome. Happy Tuesday. That feels like a Monday. I'm on a little early, just trying to get all my technology in order, get all my shares out. I think I'm in good shape. Wait just a bit longer. I'm on a little early, just 8.30 now. Hi, Mary. Happy Tuesday. I hope you're all getting excited. The catalog is launching tomorrow. I'm pretty excited. I got a big glare on my catalog there. What is number one on your order? Yes, how about those tigers, Mary? They played well. I watched a little of the pit game. Didn't, did they lose to Virginia? I think they did. All right, well, it's 8.30 and I don't want to make you ladies wait who have been prompt and right on time. So I'm gonna get started. Hi, Jody. nice to see you. All righty, I'm gonna get started. Hello everyone and welcome to my tutorial this evening. Before we get started, I wanna let you know that um, we are gonna have a, another giveaway tonight. And this is, you're gonna say, well, that's the same giveaway as last week and you're right. But the problem was that there was no share button on last week's video. Now, if you look at yours now, can you give me an indication if you guys have a share button as you're looking at your Facebook Live? I'm trying to figure out why and I'm trying to make some um, changes. So if you have a share button, let me know. I'm wondering if this is going to work. I'm sharing it from my Wexford Stamper public page, and I think that's going to help with it. So if you share onto your own personal page my Facebook Live this evening, I will put you in a drawing for this Verdant Garden. This is one of the new sets from the new annual catalog, and it is a nice photopolymer set. And if you share, I will put you in the drawing, and we will announce it next week. So let me know if there is a share button. Oh, there is, excellent. Okay, I figured out the issue. Hi, Diane. So please share away and we'll see who wins the Verdant Garden stamp set next week. All right, let's get started. As I was chatting with some of the girls as they were coming on, the new holiday catalog goes live tomorrow, which we're all very, very excited about. And I'm already got my, I've made, put in a pre-order being a demonstrator, but I already have another order that I'm going to place tomorrow, getting ready for some of my events that are coming up. So before we get started on the, on the um, tutorial for tonight, I wanted to share with you, I am running a holiday catalog designer series paper share. And what this involves is you will get, um, 12 sheets, 12 six by six sheets of all of the new holiday um, catalog papers, not the Halloween or the Thanksgiving. This is just for the Christmas ones. And you can see this, and I have this on my, on my um, Facebook page as well. It adds up to 72 sheets of designer series paper, and it costs $22 for the share. And if you're a local person, that's all you'll need to pay. But if I need to send it, I will have to add $7 to that. So if you've never been in a paper share, they're a lot of fun. I'll show you. These are some of my samples from um, the annual catalog share that I did. And what I'll do is I'll take each of the paper packs and I'll cut each of the sheets into six by six um, pieces. 
and then I'll put 12 of those sheets in a little plastic bag like this, and then there'll be a little um, label on that names the name of the paper and all the different colors that coordinate with it. So you will get 12 sheets, one, two, three, four, five, six packs of 12 sheets. And it's a great way to kind of have a sample of all the papers and you can kind of sample them before you buy. So it's a great way to um, get a look at all the papers and the holiday papers are gorgeous and you will find out um, starting tomorrow unless you already have a catalog and have had a head start on that. And the other thing I wanted to um, mention for all my local friends is that we are having another Christmas card event called Cards, Carols, and Cupcakes. And we actually offer a, an event each month for the next three months, um, September, October, and November. So um, if you're interested, let me know and I can send you more information. You make 15 cards at the event and there's three each of five different designs. So let us know if you'd be interested and I can send you the flyer or I can um, add you to my invite. All righty, so. All right, let's get started this evening on our Halloween project. Again, we'll be using the fun Spooktacular Bash stamp set along with the beautiful ornate frames. And starting tomorrow at 5 a.m., you will be able to order this. So that's exciting. If you are interested in this and, and making some of these really cute Halloween um, projects, this is a great set. I've made all the projects that I've shown since I've started the Halloweens with this suite. It's just very, very versatile and you can make all kinds of things. So let me show you what I made here. The, um, these are two little kinds of treat holders and this one is flaps open and opens like that. And it has a little, this has a Kit Kat in there. Okay, and you'll notice it's just kind of the top of a little tr um, lunch bag. Okay, and this one also is made out of that same lunch bag, but uses the bottom part, and we flip it open, and this is a much wider, okay, it has a lot more room in there. There's, you can fit two or three Twix bars in there. But what was cool about this project is you can make both of these projects using that one paper bag. All right, so let me show you the bags first. Now, I bought these bags at Michael's. And they have a big section of paper products. And these are paper sacks, and they're in black, and they're sized three and a half inches by two inches by six and three quarter inches. And they're just called paper sacks. Okay, so let me pull one out and show you. They're just like those old fashioned lunch bags that we used to take to school. They have them in lots and lots of colors, but I got the black ones, of course, for Halloween. All right. So what do we do first? What we do first is we're going to cut the paper sack. We're gonna put it in our cutter and we're gonna cut it at four and three eighths. And don't worry about any of these measurements because I've got them all on my blog, okay? So here, I have one cut here already. I cut at four and three eighths. So I'm gonna have this portion of the bag and this portion. This is kind of like a little can see right through it, okay? But we can still make that into that tiny little treat pouch. All right, so let's start with the big one first. All right, so this is the bottom portion of our treat bag, our, our um, paper bag. Hi, Lisa, nice to see you. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our tear and tape. And in order to make this, let me show you what kinds of measurements we have on these cardstock pieces. All right, for the big treat bag, you're going to need a piece of basic black cardstock that is three and three quarters by three and five eighths, and it is scored at one and one quarter. Okay, you probably can't see that score. And all these um, directions and dimensions are all gonna be on my blog, so don't worry. And then there's a smaller piece that goes on the front. This is four and a half by three and five eighths. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is get these two pieces on our bag. All right, so we're gonna take our bag like this, and it really doesn't matter which is the front or the back, but I'm gonna say this is the back, and I'm gonna take my tear and tape, 
and I'm gonna put a piece of tear and tape down both sides of the bag and across the top of the bag. We don't want this to fall apart. So we're gonna use the tear and tape and you could use liquid glue if you'd like to, but this is a little quicker and a little less messy. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take off my backings on my tear and tape. Come on, tear and tape. Don't fail me now. Okay, there we go. And then I'm gonna take the larger of the two pieces of basic black. And remember, this one was scored at one and a, and a quarter. And I'm gonna put this down and line it up directly with the bottom of the bag and along the edges like that. Okay, and then you'll see that the, that flap is gonna flap over the top like that. Okay, so that's the back. Now we're gonna do the same thing to the front, super easy. But what makes it really nice is that you take that bag and you give it a lot more stability and it's really gonna be able to stand up nicely for you. That's what adding those cardstock pieces really helps. So now I'm gonna do the same thing on the front here. And of course, we're going to add a shorter piece of basic black. I think it was four and a half inches long. Okay, there go my four pieces of tear and tape just as before. I'm gonna take those off. Come on, there we go, one. All right, and these are gonna kind of act as the mats on the front and back of the bag and you're gonna really add your layering and your embellishments on there. Boy, oh boy, there we go. Only on live Facebook, I can't get them off, huh? There we go, all right. So now I'm gonna take my shorter piece and that's gonna go on the front, same way. Gonna lay it down on the front. And there we go, okay. Okay, so we have the back and the front. And then if you open the bottom, you're gonna have a nice sturdy bag that'll be able to stand up if you're gonna have it for like a party, um, a party favor, or if you wanna stand them all up on the, on the table for the trick-or-treaters, they're gonna stand up and they're not gonna fall at all. All right, so let's go ahead and put our designer series paper. Remember this designer series paper is from the Monster Bash Suite, so cute. This one has a lot of little cute little monsters on it. And that one's gonna go on the front and I am gonna pull out my glue for this one. And we're gonna glue him right to the front. All right. And it's cut so that you're gonna have a little bit of a border around. Let me read here, I have the size of the panels. The size of the panels are three and three eighths by four and a quarter, is that one. And then we're just gonna flap that black panel over from the back. And we're gonna put our piece of designer series paper on the front of that. Okay. Now you could, if you wanted to, put one on the back too, but I didn't for this project, but that would be a great idea as well. So we're almost done already. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is make my little um, embellishment for the front. And to do that, we're gonna do some stamping. We're going to use our Spooktacular Bash set, and we're gonna use the Have a Spooktacular Halloween. Okay, so I'm gonna take my Memento ink, and I'm gonna stamp on this pumpkin pie. There we go. Love these colors for Halloween. And then we're going to get the big shot. Let me move these pieces away for just a second. Get the big shot. I'll put this right on there and I will get out This is the die that comes with the set. Looks kind of like a tombstone, perfect for Halloween. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut out my spooktacular. Gonna put the other acrylic plate over top. Let me make sure that 
oops, that moved. Let me bring it out a little bit so I don't have to, there we go. Hard to keep it under the camera. There we go, go under. And there he is, all cut out. And I love this because it has a little bit of, oh boy, I'm, we're shaking, aren't we? It has a little bit of stitching around it too. All right, so let's put him away for now. Let's bring back our bag and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna adhere our sentiment using a couple of dimensionals. You can always know how much I love my dimensionals. And I'm gonna put it right down here on the bottom of the bag. Okay, and now we're standing up. And let's see, you can then put your, all your candies in there. And now you're gonna need something to close. And what I used was the gorgeous glittered organdy ribbon. Look at this, it's got sparkles. Just really, really pretty. And what I did, I took a piece of this and I just wrapped it around the flap. Get a little more that way. And this is nice sturdy ribbon that's gonna stay put. And then I tied a bow. Nervousness, see if I can do a bow on live TV. All right, there we go. And I'm just gonna snip the ends here. And there you have your first bag. How easy was that? How quick? But it just makes your little um, treat bag look a little jazzier, okay? So there's the first one, all right? Now, let's take a look at our second one here. This is more like a wallet style. Okay, we're gonna use that tiny bit of bag that we have left. Here it is, okay? But Barb, there's a hole in the bottom. That is right, but we're gonna make it work with this new this wallet design. It works really well. Okay, so let me show you how we'll get that started. Again, we're gonna go back. This time we're going to use a piece of pumpkin pie cardstock. This is cut at three and three quarters by eight inches. Okay, let's bring up my scoreboard. All right, what are we going to score at, you may ask? How about one and a half, two, three and three quarters, five and a quarter, okay? One and a half, two, four and three quarters, five and a quarter, okay? And that's all, all right. And you'll notice now how this is going to kind of fold up to look like a wallet, okay? And it gives you a little half inch here so you have room and you know space for your little goodies, but it folds up into kind of a wallet style. And just as we did with the other one, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to add some of the paper on the outside, but first we wanna take care of our inside, okay? So, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put a piece of tear and tape on the top and the bottom of the bag, okay? Now, it's going to if you notice here, there are two lines here, two score lines. You wanna line it up with the second score line here. So let me take this off. Okay, and then we're going to line it up with the second score line right against there, and you're gonna have a little bit of wiggle room on each side of the bag there, okay? Now to close up the pouch, you're gonna to wanna to add two more pieces of tear and tape across the other side of the bag. Hi, Jerry, thanks for joining. 
Hi, Gina. Go Tigers. How about those Tigers on, on Thursday? They played so well. All right. Let's go ahead and take those off. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to bring the front side up. And you're only going to bring it up to the inside score line here because this is going to kind of flop over. So then once you bring it up to that first line, then you're going to press down on the bag. And then you have your little pouch. Okay. Now the bottom is, is going to be fine because it's against the bottom part of the cardstock. So there's your wallet. That's how easy that is to make. Okay, now we're going to take a couple of pieces of the designer series paper. This time we're going to use some of the paper with the bats on it. All right, and we're going to go ahead using my Tombow. We're going to glue this to the front panel and I'll have all the dimensions and things on the blog. And then I'm going to take the other piece, make sure I have my bats flying the right direction, and I'm going to just put that on the top panel. These are so quick and easy to put together. These would be really great if you had to make a bunch of them to just kind of have an assembly line to make. So there is the um, pouch. Now we want to put some embellishment here, number one, to finish it off. And for number two, it kind of adds a little weight to the flap and helps it stay closed a little better. All right, so if we look here at my um, embellishment on the front here, what it has is it has a basic black piece of cardstock cut out using my starburst punch. If you don't have this one in your collection, this one I use an awful lot in my um, crafting. So that's a great one to have. So I have that. And then I did in advance, I cut out the little frame. These frames are so amazing. They're so cute, but they're just very ornate and they're perfect for the little spooky pictures. So I already cut that out using the um, die from the ornate frame set, okay? So the only thing I have left here to do is work on my um, vampire. So let's go ahead and get out a piece of white. All right, get back to that memento ink. Jerry, what are you asking for size? What size for what, dear? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stamp my little vampire. And what I added to this one was I took my blend, my light soft seafoam blend, and I gave him a little bit of a green complexion. Because whenever you see a, a vampire in any kind of a movie or anything, they always are kind of green, aren't they? Because they're kind of dead. So their coloring is not quite that good. So I color his little face with the seafoam green and then I have little hands. So now he looks like a real dead vampire. Isn't he cute? Okay. So let's go ahead and bring up the big shot again. I'll try not to go crazy with it and shake the place. Yes, Karen, I love this DSP too. It is so cute. I've got to get some more as a matter of fact. With all these um, projects I've made, I've got to start getting ready now for my trick-or-treaters. So time to get some more paper. Oh, come on, hands. Don't fail me now. All right, so there. We're going to cut him out using the die from the frame set. Oop, don't go too fast. We don't want to shake the place. Woo, and there he is. Let's put this away. There we go. Now we are going to place him with dimensionals. The round punch, Jerry, is called the starburst punch. Is that the one you're asking about? That doesn't have a size, it's just called starburst. 
It's a little bigger than two inches. You use it with a two inch circle and it makes a little um, border around it. So there, I'm gonna put my, okay, Dracula's all ready to go. He's in his ornate frame. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of glue. Come on glue, there we go. And I'm gonna adhere that to my starburst. Okay, so there is my embellishment. Isn't he cute? All right, one last thing to do. We have to bring back my whisper white paper and we have to do our little happy Halloween. And this I got out of the Teeny Tiny Wishes. There's a set that have a lot of little sentiments like Happy Mother's Day, Merry Christmas, Happy Birthday. It's a great set to have in your collection. I'm gonna use the Happy Halloween one. And then I'm gonna cut him out using the little window punch. Okay. All right, let's go back to our wallet. Okay, last thing we need to do now is we're gonna adhere this to the front of the wallet. The way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna take a piece of my Taran tape and adhere it to the top, because this is gonna be a, have a lot of opening and closing, so you want that to be nice and sturdy. So I'm gonna put that on the top side of my circle on the back. And now I'm gonna put it right on the front of my wallet. Need some stuff in there so it has something to push down. Okay, so there he is, right on the front. Last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my Happy Halloween right there on the bottom. I'm just gonna take a little bit of glue for that. And I'm gonna stick it right there. So there it is. There is the wallet. How easy was that, friends, huh? And here's my bag. Here's my extra wallet and bag. So this is something that you could whip up easily. This bag of bags I got here, there's 16 in here, so I could make 32 little treats. And these would be great for trick-or-treaters. So I hope you enjoyed the um, video this evening and you'll try out some of these um, projects on your own. Remember, tomorrow starts the new holiday catalog you can start ordering tomorrow. Um, if you're interested in any of the projects that you see and any of the products you see, you can always go to my website, um, and that's listed right here, barbareed.stampinup.net. If you need the dimensions for any of the Halloween projects we've done, you can go to my blog and the wexfordstamper.blogspot.com. Message me if you have any questions about anything I've done this evening, and I thank you so much for joining me and remember to share this video and you can maybe be a winner tomorrow, um, not tomorrow, next Tuesday of our Verdant Garden stamp set. Next week, I have one more. Let's see, what do we have left to do? Let's do this one. Okay, I just had to go up and look and see what I had. This is our project for next week. Put these away. How many of you don't love a good Reese's peanut butter pumpkin? Hmm? I love them. I see them every day. I go to Rudder's to get a drink. I see these right at the front counter and I'm very tempted to get them. So this is a little holder that holds the pumpkin. Okay? So I will show you next week how to make these cute little pumpkin, peanut butter pumpkin holders. So join me next week and we'll work on that. Following next week, we're gonna try and work on some of the thanks. I have some Thanksgiving and fall related projects as well. So thank you for joining me. Hi, Cheryl, thanks for joining. And please don't hesitate to share. And if you know anyone else that would enjoy the crafting and the videos, please share it with them. And take care and have a great week. Bye now.